Hey, what's up everybody? Merry Christmas, happy holidays. This is the holiday special here for the Jag Bar. I am your host, BTB, and welcome to the new set. That's right, this is a brand new set where we are gonna do all three shows out of the Jag Bar, Lynx Lounge, and 7800 Avenue. Uh, see, I was doing all those shows in different places, so it, it you know was a lot for me to uh, try to uh, you know get there and do the show and then come over here and do this show and go so it's all in one place now hey BTB where is your guest you don't have a guest today you're right I don't have a guest but what I do have is a copy of Cybermorph and uh, I've never actually really played this back when it came out this is a new um, discovery for me and um, I just thought it wouldn't be fair to bring a guest in you know to share a game that I never played Kind of weird. And uh, since we're talking about Christmas and holidays, I thought what a great way to talk about the pack-in that uh, some of you would have got if you got a Jaguar for Christmas. Now, I didn't get the Jaguar for Christmas. I got a base model, and I, Aliens vs. Predator was my first game. And uh, I, I never got Cybermorph. I did get Battlemorph later on, but uh, this is a new one. So along with Cybermorph today, and my trusty Jaguar official gamer's guide. I'm gonna tackle this game. So while we're exploring planets today on Cybermorph, I'm also gonna teach you how to make my homemade Kahlua recipe. It's very easy, you guys are gonna love it, and it's great to give out for gifts for Christmas time, so it's perfect. So let's get this episode going, play some Cybermorph, make some Kahlua, and uh, let's uh, enjoy the holidays. Let's do it. Here's Benjamin Hall on the Jaguar system to play Cybermorph. Let's see how those beastly graphics and intricate moves that only come from 64 bits of Mega Power feel. Then, Cybermorph only on Jaguar by Atari. Get bit by Jaguar. Do this. All right, uh, let's start with a little uh, e-meth. Usually when I start a party, I always like to start off with a little bit of e-meth. Good luck. All right, here we go. Oh, there's a pod right there. Well done. Thank you very much. Whoa! Getting blasted by the hermit crabs there. No good. Man, they just put you right back into the action there. There's the portal. I just missed it. My steering is kind of crazy. I need a hot tip. To avoid oversteering, tap the control pad left or right instead of holding it down. I'm holding it down. I need to tap it. See? This is why you need this. Good luck. There we go. Good. Go too fast, don't go too fast. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well 
There it is. And I blew right past it. I like to back up into the portals, you know. It's my style. I overshoot it and go backwards. You gotta get this book. This has got everything in it. Especially if you want, you know, like detailed maps on Aliens vs. Predator. Get, get out of here. Maps, you know, from Wolfenstein, you know? Where are you gonna get those at? Tips on uh, Kazumi Ninja? Gosh. Here's the deal, for real, so. The Cybermorph section sucks, man. They really jip you. It's only a couple of pages, and even in the introduction it says, uh, because of the first three stages of the game, they're not overly difficult, we're only gonna cover the last two stages in detail, but we also give you a ton of strategies to help you smash through the early stages. I wanna go to this Enos here, Enos level, and pick up some weapons. I'm tired of this little pea shooter. Good luck. Good work. Good. All right, where's the portal? Here we go. Let's get out of here. Got it this time. Now while I head to the next world, remember I promised you my recipe for homemade Kahlua and I'm gonna deliver that to you right now. Okay, so first off, it's a three part recipe. It's coffee, sugar, vodka, and that's it. A little bit of vanilla at the end. So this was five bucks. It's super cheap. You could get really expensive coffee. You can get really cheap coffee. Personally, I've done it all. I've done really expensive coffee. I've done really cheap coffee. And guess what? The cheap coffee it tastes just as good. And so it's up to you. But if you want to tell people, if you want to be that guy or girl that's like, oh, well, I made this with really expensive coffee. Knock yourself out. Merry Christmas. Whatever. All right, so I've got brown sugar. I'm gonna start off with brown sugar, and if, when I run out of brown sugar, I'm gonna use cane sugar. I mix and match, I don't care. And then I've got three parts of cheap vodka, bottom shelf vodka. If you want to use expensive stuff, the vodka is the second to last step. You do not wanna put this vodka in the mixture of the sugar and the coffee because what's gonna happen is it's gonna burn off all of the alcohol, especially when it's hot. So you gotta wait for that soup to cool, then you add this, then you add a little bit of this. Pure vanilla extract, just a little bit at the end. I don't even measure it anymore. I'm sure it's a couple tablespoons, teaspoons, whatever. Pour it in, it's good to go. All right, it's time for you to brew some coffee. If you have a drip brewer, if you have a percolator, if you have an espresso puller, whatever, it's time to start doing that right now. Now what I did was I used that espresso grind in a percolator. And basically what that's gonna do, that's gonna give me a nice, hearty, dark, dark, you know, roast. That's what I want. Okay, so we're gonna start our three parts coffee, three parts sugar. Let's get on this right now, shall we? Three parts coffee. Now we are gonna move on to the sugar portion. That's one. Okay, this is two. I already ran out of brown sugar, so now I switched over to my regular white sugar. Three. This concoction that we're making right here, it is going to simmer for an hour. All right, as you can see, we are simmering here. We've got about a half hour left. You can see how far this is cooked down already. And uh, this stuff is getting really nice and tasty right here. Look at that. When you're done with this whole concoction, you're gonna need to let it sit for about a month in a dark uh, closet or cabinet in a dark colored bottle. Now, what I do with these bottles is I used to get all into it and peel off the labels and all that stuff, but lately, here's my technique. What I do is I just get some uh, gray automotive primer. I spray the whole bottle down, labels and all. 
Then I get that really cool rock um, spray paint stuff that looks like a rock fleck. And then I just load that thing up with this. And what you're left with is a very cool looking tiki type bottle. I mean, how appropriate, right? You're at the Jag bar. Gotta have a little tiki bottle to be cool. Get creative with your bottle, I mean, or not. You could wrap it with aluminum foil or with a brown paper bag and say, here you go, Merry Christmas. God bless America. Get out of here. All right, so this is cooling off here. Now we're gonna add a little go-go juice. Three parts. All right, next we're gonna put the vanilla extract in there. Like I said, whoa, I'm a cowboy. I'm just gonna go crazy with it. I'm gonna stir this up here, and then we are gonna transfer it to the bottle. All right, so we gotta get this into this, and this is a, a big uh, bottle that I always use. It has a nice uh, topper on it, because remember, this is gonna have to sit for a month, right, before we even put it into our fancy bottles. So I just use this, throw this in the cupboard, and forget about it until it is ready to be poured into the other bottles. But we gotta get it in there, so funnel, little spoon, be careful. And uh, away we go. There's another one. Woo! Can I cut through there? I think I can. There it is. Good work. Portal now open. There it is. Piece of cake. So this game is pretty darn smooth. It plays really well. The thing is, is that I'm playing it with this controller. This was my pack-in controller here. It has the gray pause and option buttons, has the gray buttons uh, for the, uh, uh, the, the numbers. It's got a very smooth touch to the controller up here. Uh, the last two or three nights I was playing this, I was playing with this controller here, and this is the black uh, button uh, pause and option, and uh, the number pads are, are black as well. This pad up here is different than this one. This one is very sharp, and uh, it has, hear that? It's very noisy, it has a pop to it, and it's very hard to get any kind of smooth um, control to it. Um, it just, it feels cheap. It feels cheap for some reason. The cord is, is very thin. Um, my original cord is very thick, and it just has a different feel to it. Uh, this could have been one of the early ones, and then for, you know, I guess a cost-saving measure, maybe they went to some cheaper materials. But uh, for the most part, this is my go-to controller. I always use this one. Uh, I don't know why I was using that one. I think I was just trying something different. And uh, lo and behold, there's something to be said with this D-pad here. Come on, get that. Bonus World Award, look at that. Whoa! Well, that didn't go too well. Well, I gotta say, um, I really enjoyed Cybermorph. I enjoyed the gameplay. I enjoyed that um, it was different. You know, it's a different kind of a game. Let's get this straight. This Cybermorph versus Star Fox debate, it's not a debate. It can't be a debate. What it is, it is lazy video game journalism. These are two totally different games. Star Fox is on rails, and it happens to be a gray triangle-shaped spaceship. Cybermorph is an adventure game 
you could go anywhere, do anything within the confines of this gray polygon spaceship. The mechanics for either game are completely different. Sure, you shoot and you blow up ships, but guess what? I would say that Space Harrier has more in common with Star Fox than Star Fox has with Cybermorph. You understand? They're both on rails. You fight a boss at the end and you can fly your ship around those rails. That's Star Fox, guess what? That's also 1985 Space Harrier. So check that out, do some research. Cybermorph is its own beast, it's its own thing. We could not have games like Resident Evil, Metal Gear Solid, and Mario 64 without games like Cybermorph. You have to start somewhere. And in this time period in video games, I believe that a lot of designers really didn't worry about game mechanics so much as they did how many polygons can we push, how could we round these polygons off, and how could we make this 3D world possible. The gameplay in that time really took a nosedive, but they had to do that. They had to start there. And then we start to get games later on where you see like a fully realized 3D world in uh, early PlayStation games. Going from 16-bit 2D games into a 3D landscape like Cybermorph, you could see how that would be really, really attractive to uh, you know an older gamer that uh, was done with Mario, he's done with Sonic, he wants something a little bit edgy. You know, Jaguar's marketing was all very, very edgy. And you get a game like Cybermorph. And you look at it in the magazine and you go, you know what? This is sexy. I want, I don't want this kid stuff anymore. I want something new. And I, I think that this was a, a pretty good pack in. Is it perfect? It's not a perfect game. But you know what? It's not trash either. It's a pretty good game. I'm very surprised with it. And in fact, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't get it as a pack-in back in the day. Because it would have been great for me to, you know, later on get Battle Morph and go, you know what, wow, what a step up this game was. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Jag Bar. I enjoyed playing Cybermorph with you. I enjoyed sharing that recipe with you on the homemade clue because you are going to need it when you make your Atari twists this holiday season. So get out there, get in the kitchen, start making a mess, and get in the game room and start playing some Cybermorph. Give it another chance. So don't listen to what these other guys are saying about how bad this game is. It's not a perfect game, but you know what? It's darn fun and I have been enjoying playing it. So if you like this show, you might like the show that I do for the Atari Lynx. It's called The Lynx Lounge. There's also the 7800 Avenue, which is a new show that we're rolling out, and we are just gonna tear through the 7800 library. We're gonna invite friends over, and we're gonna share with them that amazing system that really never got a chance, but we are gonna give it another chance here, and uh, we're gonna play some amazing Atari games, and we are gonna celebrate this American company who started it all. Cheers. Have a great Christmas. I hope you guys get great gifts. Hope there's some great pack-ins as well. And uh, I will see you on the next episode. Cheers. Check out Atari.io for the very best in retro life and classic gaming. From Atari to Nintendo, Sega, TurboGrafx, and beyond. Atari.io.